has made. She's a queen. This is dedicated to all my beautiful queens, all my beautiful ladies out there. She's a queen. Go queen. You got it, girl. She's a queen. You better represent. Go queen. Go queen. Go. She's a queen about her business. Queen. Working hard on a mission. Thank you guys for joining another episode of the Key Chat Podcast. Today, my special guest is Ms. Jennifer Hessler. She's a leadership life coach, and she's the author of Damn It, Don't Want To, The No BS Organizational Planner You Need It. So we're going to go ahead and dive in. Jennifer has some great gems that she's going to drop to you guys on just being organized and going after everything that you want in life. So I want to go ahead and give her the floor. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well really excited to talk to you get the message out i'm happy to talk to you as well so i was looking through all your information now of course first of all i want you to explain to everyone what is a leadership life coach because i know a lot of times we hear the term life coach but i know you said you're a leadership life coach so go ahead and explain that to everyone well it kind of happened when I started looking at who I was attracting and who I'm attracted to in terms of my clients. Mm -hmm. And most of them are leaders uh, of their own businesses. They could be entrepreneurs. They could be presidents of companies, corporate companies, smaller companies, small business owners, but leaders in the sense of people that are out there pushing forward towards their goals, whether it's their own career goals or they're working um, or their own entrepreneurial goals. So the reason I combine the two is because my style of coaching is very holistic. And so a lot of times when I'm coaching leaders, they're very goal oriented and it's towards, um, it could be anything in their life, but their mindset is very goal oriented. And so it's, We meet up with each other, we talk, I find out what it is they need support in, and then there's a goal setting and a clarity and organization that I do with them so that they can accomplish the goal. But what I found is that I believe that no one comes to the table, any single scenario without bringing their whole self. Mm -hmm. And so we are programmed as people to kind of leave your personal self alone at home. And then when you go to work, you're supposed to be this other person. And it doesn't work, to me, it doesn't work that way. Like we carry ourselves to every situation. So I included the life aspect of it because no matter who I'm coaching, I'm looking at your entire scenario. So if I'm meeting with a leader and I feel that their energy is a little off, I'm gonna say, how are you? How's your day going? What's going on? And I, I hold space for their entire life. It could be a relationship going bad. It could be you know, the, their child keep care person isn't working out or any, all, all of those things, they could have an ailing parent. Those things affect us, you know? So uh, the leadership life um, title, life coach title is just me trying to encapsulate my whole holistic kind of approach to coaching. Okay, okay. Now, looking through all your information, of course, we are going to talk about the new planner that you have, but I noticed some other things that I wanted to talk about regarding your leadership coaching. So some of the important things that I saw just looking through the information was clarity, goal setting, and goal planning. So I wanted to go over those three points with the first one with clarity, just looking through the information. I saw something that was very, very, very important where it stated, get out of your own way. So can you go ahead and break down clarity in relation to get out of your own way? I know we hear that a lot in this world. I know you mentioned mindset, which is extremely important. So can we talk about that? No, absolutely. I think I'm a freelancer. I've been a freelancer most of my career. I've been an entrepreneur in more times over as well. And I just feel like creative people specifically tend to um, have a lot of ideas. 
a lot of ideas. And when I first started, I was working in the arts and media and entertainment industry. That is like predominantly my career has been in arts, media and entertainment. So that type of personality, I would meet a lot. And so it would be, I wanna work with you. I'm also a business consultant. So I wanna work with you, Jennifer. And I'd say, okay, well, what are we focusing on? Well, I wanna do this and I wanna do this and I wanna do this and I wanna do this. And then what tends to happen when you put a million things on the plate in front of you is you don't eat. There's just too much to choose from. So the first thing I like to do with any client is let's talk about what maybe the three things you wanna focus on in terms of your goals. And then let's get clear about that because you can have an idea in your mind and even a process of how you wanna get there, but it isn't actually real. Some of it is imagined, some of it you haven't prepared for. So let's get clear about the idea. Let's get clear about what you're willing to do, um, not willing to do. And that moves into the goal setting and the goal planning, right? So setting the goals is one thing, planning the goals is another thing. And I, it's a funny distinction, right? But it's really being clear about what your idea is, what your pursuit is, what is your goal, then what, is, what are the goals um, in terms of acquiring the goals? So it's a lot of steps to that. So you, let's say you wanna start a business. Uh, you want to be an illustrator. You wanna have your own design t-shirt, t-shirt design business. Okay, that's the idea. How exactly? Let's be clear, what's your niche? Are you doing children's t-shirts? Are you doing adults? Um, are you pursuing a certain niche audience? Then setting the goals. Okay, well, let's look at what has to happen for you to get there. Have you incorporated yourself or have you trademarked your designs? Let's go down the line of all the things that need to happen to accomplish that goal. And then let's plan them out. So it's one thing now to know what you want to do and know the steps, but how are we going to get this done? So goal, that's what goal planning does. And getting out of your own way is really, really getting out of your own mind because I, I think a lot of us when we're not really clear about the goal it's very overwhelming and so then we don't do anything and that can start uh trigger a lot of internal conversation you know mm -hmm. i'm not pursuing i can't finish something i don't go for what i want why can't and it's only just because somebody didn't help you get clear and help you guide you towards a, a place of like okay now i have a plan i know what i'm doing so getting out of your own way sometimes is, for me, it's recognizing the, as a coach, I'm very quick to recognize when my client has limiting thoughts. And mm -hmm. so if we could talk about that as well, that's the life coach, coach aspect of it. Then we move that out of the way. We move you as you know it out of the way to find the better you, to motivate, <laughs> to move you forward. Mm -hmm. I hope that, did that make sense, yes? <laughs> Yeah, and I love how you mentioned, because I'm in that same boat, and I, I, I feel it's the same conversation when you meet people like you mentioned who freelance entrepreneurs who are creatives. There are a billion ideas. It's literally a blessing and a curse when you have different talents and different options. It's like, where can you go? Because you literally have a ton of different options. And people like me, I feel like when you do have a lot of creative options, you also tend to be slightly hyperactive. Mm -hmm. Because you're trying to pick all the apples off the tree at the same time and your bucket gets full, you know, because it's like, what am I supposed to do? So that's an excellent point. Do you find, and I'm going to slightly go off track because there's something else I want to ask based off of what you just mentioned. Do you find when you have clients who, like you said, are creatives and they may have a lot of different ideas, do you find like some common threads that they all share, you know, when you're speaking to people like this, that's important to work on in order to gain that clarity? Yes. Most creative people think um, are kind of intimidated by the business side of what they were trying to pursue. And they, uh, a kind of constant line that I hear is, my brain doesn't work that way. That's what creative people tell me all the time. It's like, my brain doesn't work that way. So there's almost this hands up thing that they do where it's just like, oh, I just wanna be an artist. And um, as a creative person myself, I used to sing, I've designed clothing, I've done a whole bunch of things a lot of them I didn't actually execute all the way, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and partly because of my own internal conversation of having to do the work to set up the infrastructure for the business. So right. that is one thing that creative people do a lot. 
they talk themselves out of creating a, creating a business and really, really looking into the business side of the industry that they're trying to pursue. Um, and for me, it's like, once again, if I'm coaching them, because again, I, because I'm a business consultant as well, it's not supposed to cross over, but because I have enough experience in different areas, it's very hard not to bring it to the table, if not internally in my own mind when I'm dealing with someone. But my thing is like, look at your life. Are you paying your bills? If you're paying your bills, you understand how to deal with business. It's all, life is a business. Mm -hmm. if, if, you're, if you figured out how to take a pinch here, pay this bill, do this, do that. If you have gone online and learned how to do a program so that you can um, add to your education or your skill set, you have. Add to your education or your skill set. You have a mind already for how to become much more structured. It's just structure. So I try a lot of the time to go. I'm not going to do the work for you. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just. I, I don't want to do that. I'd rather guide you through a process so that you can become stronger in knowing most of all that you can handle this. But I don't think that you're going to be successful if you don't understand you could pay a lot of people to do what you don't want to do but right. but then then you're trusting someone to really really handle your marketing your you have to understand and learn all of these things how do you a lot of people creative people are having works they're painting they're designing they're graphic artists in every medium television radio all of that and they don't have a business structure they don't mm -hmm. understand taxes they don't understand how to file taxes they don't know how to save they don't they're you know they're so concerned with the artistic aspect of it which i understand i come from a, a father who was a singer and a mother who was a dancer i understand that personality but for you to survive and to to thrive you have to be willing to understand the business so mm. that is the common theme that i hear with creative people a lot I love that. And I love how you said life is a business. Definitely yeah. correct. Yeah. <laughs> so the next point is goal setting. And with the goal setting point that I found looking through the information, it's what you want and why. So can you go ahead and break that one down? Because I think the why portion is the main thing. I think that keeps people either dedicated or they either walk away. So let's hear yeah. about that. Um, I, I, you know, again, like we were talking specifically about creative people, and this is for anybody across the board, right? A lot of us have a lot of ideas of how to become self-sufficient. Maybe we want to leave, leave our jobs or maybe we want to expand in our jobs. Um, and the why matters in terms of your dedication, right? So do you, are you pursuing something because you think you want to make more money? Are you pursuing something because you think you want, you're gonna be affirmed more, seen more um, by pursuing this thing? How is it, are you leveraging to try to get to somewhere else? Are you, is this a full stop? Is this because I need to take care of my mom or my child and I need some more money? Is this about uh, being able to express yourself, all of your talents, and so you're pursuing that? It's time to do your own thing or you've, You've had an idea for a long time and you want to do it. The why is necessary for you to keep going because none of this is easy, right? As a coach, I deal with leaders predominantly and I, I describe what that, that personality is. But even as a life coach, just dealing with anybody and everybody, um, if it's about fixing a relationship, if it's about looking at yourself and trying to develop your, um, your confidence, well, why? Why does this matter now? What's going to change now? What is your commitment to actually doing the work to change? What is your commitment to actually doing the work to realize the goal? And then once you accomplish the goal, is there more? You know, what else do you want to do? Um, I want to say something to what you said before. Um, like as a creative, there's so many things that you want to do all the time. You don't, it's just, you don't know where to start. Um, I will say, once you hone in on one thing first and you go down, you do it from top to bottom, that usually becomes the template for almost everything else you want to do. 
Mm -hmm. right? It, it just does. You will find yourself learning a lot of things in the process of focusing on that one thing. So for me, it's about telling people, anybody, like once you are committed to accomplishing that one thing first, you will find yourself strengthened, more confident, more knowledgeable, and you'll lose, use a lot of that information, tools, and new behaviors to do the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And so I feel like a lot of people get feeling like, oh my God, am I going to be able to do everything? And the other thing that I always tell everybody is until you're dead, you could do whatever you want. Like there's so many things I want to do still. I'm going to do it. I just have to be committed to doing it. Mm. Um, so I, I just wanted to circle back to that, you know, and, and the why is always important in all of those things. Why now? I love that. That's like the best tagline I think I've ever heard in a long time. Until you're dead, you can do whatever you want. You like can I love do whatever that. You want. Like I, wh who says? If I, if I listened to anybody, I wouldn't have had my child in my forties. If I, I <laughs> if anybody, everybody was telling me about my age and my this and my that, and if there's so many things I still want to accomplish as a on a, a creative level too. I used to perform and. So I have ideas that I've written in 1990 something. I have a, a thing that I want to do. It's a, a video perf performance of a poem that I did. I'm going to do mm -hmm. it. I'm going to mm -hmm. do it. You know? I, I love it. Okay. Yeah, if I had that mindset, me and you, you and I would not be talking. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> never happened. <laughs> yeah. it's the, so the why is important. Um, but the internal... The answer sometimes to the why is just because it's something you really, really want to do. And that mm -hmm. sometimes is enough. For me, that's enough. I want it. I'm going to do mm -hmm. it. It doesn't yeah. matter the, the amount of time in between I do it or I start and I stop. It's still like something that I really, really want to accomplish. And the, my other way of thinking is, you know, if I end my days, it's kind of depressing to think about, but I, I want to have very few re regrets as I get older. I don't want to look back and go, damn, I should have. And, I could have, but I did. I don't want to do that. So I give myself my entire lifetime to accomplish what I want. That's easy. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I think the why is part of the equation that leads to the dedication. You know, you have to know your why in order to be dedicated. And I put you as far as, you know, life is extremely short. That was one of my personal reasons for pursuing my dreams and walking away from a job that I wasn't happy with because I'm like, I don't want to waste my life yes. on a nine to five. And I know that sounds, you know, I know a lot of people don't agree with that, but hey, you know, once again, it's about doing what makes you happy. Exactly. You know, you don't pursue your goals and what yeah. makes you happy. You're going to end up with a lot of regret, yeah. you know, and I always yeah. tell people, I dream big. Dreaming big, I feel, will get you where you need to yeah. be at when you truly really believe in those dreams and you look at yourself that, hey, I really can accomplish that. And that's one of my main platforms with self-love because I feel like when you really love yourself, you are, you start seeing what you're capable of and what you can truly accomplish when you and the self love ties to confidence. I know you mentioned that too. If you don't have those components, it really will just be a situation where you just you know it's like a dream deferred. You're just sitting there wondering, well, maybe I should do this. Uh, and then you're going to easily talk yourself out of it. But I feel like when you truly have that confidence and that self love, some people call it arrogance or cockiness, but I just feel like you really need to own your qualities and say, hey, I really can do this. Even if it sounds far-fetched to someone else, it makes, as long as it makes sense to you, that's all that matters. And, you know, so. Absolutely. And owning the dream, right? Like, um, I think the, transferring to the dream into a goal. So I'm constantly talking about that, like movement forward, right? It's taking it from here and going, oh, this is something I really want to do to, okay, this is something I'm going to do. Let me put it like a goal. This is going to happen. And then what are the steps to making it happen? And, mm. I, you know, I don't think the, I think through COVID as well, through this experience we just had, I think there's a lot of people at many different ages coming to this reality of it. This is it. This is, this is it. it was, I mean, it's so cliche, right? Live your best life. You only have one life, all of that stuff. But I think leaving a nine to five, I'm not encouraging anybody to do that. But I understand people who do that, who recognize, first off, that you are building somebody else's dream. Mm. They're paying you to build their dream. Yes. And they're probably not paying your value. They never are. Never. <laughs> they just never are, right? And so what happens to your dream? It's deferred, as you said. Mm -hmm. And 
obviously we need to survive. We need to make money to survive. And sometimes that includes having a job. But mm -hmm. if you could get to the place of having a job and working on your, the side thing until it becomes the thing, always including yourself into your life, you know, always including yourself into your life. I'm a mother of a seven-year-old. I include my, myself into my life first. Mm -hmm. And that sounds harsh to a lot of other mothers, right? This idea of complete devotion to your husband. And, no, I, 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 I totally disagree. Me first. Mm -hmm. Me first, because when I'm good, she's good. When I perform or when I perform at my best level, she's good. I told her about the interview. She said, mommy, am I going to be in the interview? I said, no, it wasn't about you. It's about me. <laughs> she you know, to get it. And I'm like, no. But you know, as a mother, I learned that the hard way because I grew up in a traditional I learned that the hard way because I grew up in a traditional upbringing, you know, the, the dad that worked, the mom that stayed at home and her life was literally her kids, yeah. you know? So when I got older and I became a mother and a wife at the time, I thought that that was the blueprint. Like I was like literally not supposed to have a life. Like everything was supposed to be about the children. And I just, I ate that up. And I really learned the hard way because terrible divorce, terrible other things that happened. I was burnt out because yeah. I, my whole identity was mother this. It's like all my other dreams were like out the out the window. And I remember one time me with my ex-spouse, this was after I had my youngest child and he mentions, he's like, well, you can just do this when he grows up. And I was like, wow. in 18 years, you know, it's just like, <laughs> are you kidding me? You know, so it's like, I really had to reprogram myself to get back to who I was mm -hmm. without feeling guilty because mm -hmm. I agree as mothers as women and I just had a conversation about this a few episodes ago that invisible cape that we put on our backs which probably weigh like steel and this S on our chest that needs to go away because it weighs you down and we feel like we have to live up to some ridiculous image and we end up losing ourselves and it's unfair to what our, to our value and it's unfair to our dreams. So I, I do agree with that 100%. And you're right, it is hard for some mothers because you know we're all conditioned that, oh, your children come first, but they're, a, they're kids, I'm the adult and I'm the nurturer. So if I put my children first- The mask. Exactly, this plane is gonna go down. <laughs> I, I have a mask on, I can't help. But, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's seriously like that. And I, you know, I'm not disparaging mothers who fully, um, yeah. you know, do that. And, and that is their happiness. Mm -hmm. I think that's beautiful as well. Um, right. But I think for me personally, Jennifer comes first in that way. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that includes taking time away. I wrote a, what I call them articles instead of blog posts, but I wrote this article about me putting myself first. And that includes... If she's being very emotionally tactile, like I'm an empath, I'm a very sensitive person. If I get yeah. filled, I'm just like, you've got to give me some space. Right. You know, I will leave and go sit in the car and get a Starbucks. And I need, I'm very honest about that because if I'm not, then, I, then I'm aggressive or I get angry or I get sullen or I get quiet. And as you know, a woman's vibration, it like we, our vibration moves, we, we take up space. So if mm -hmm. Jennifer's, if mommy's not good, nothing's good, right? right. So mm -hmm. yeah, I just, I just, I'm honest in that. And I'm honest with my daughter. You know, I tell her straight, like, like mommy doesn't want you to hug me right now. Like give mm -hmm. me a little moment. Mm -hmm. And so, because I need her to understand as well as a woman, God willing, if that's what you want, she'll be a mother. And I wanted mm -hmm. to be able to say to her partner, her children, I need me. I'm me. Mm -hmm. You cannot just hang on me for everything. Like, I need, I need, I'm here too. I'm valid. You know, I'm solid. Um, as I'm encouraging my daughter to be the same. So, yeah, I'm sorry that you went through pain in terms of that relationship. But I'm glad that you came to recognizing, like, no, in the 24 hours, you're included. 
Right. Because one thing I had to realize too, in order to be my best self as a mother, I need to be the best version of myself to give my children the best mother that they need. And the best that they need was a mother who was whole and whole in every definition of the word for me personally, whole as in pursuing my dreams, whole as in not being at a miserable job, you know, whole as to achieving the goals that I've had for years, you know? So I just feel like as women, we really truly can have it all. I know like, um, like I'm in, in my forties, but I know like in the eighties, that was the whole working mother thing. That was the first, you know, definition of working mothers and the big question of can a woman have it all? And the answer honestly is yes, a woman can have whatever she wants, you know, but I just feel like the definition of being a mother, and that can be another episode I can do down the line. I feel like the definition of being a mother, it's not this, you know, miserable thing where it's like you're, you're you have a child stuck to you 24 seven and you have no life and you're all haggard and worn out. It's like, I just feel like that narrative needs to wash away. I am proud of women nowadays. I feel like we're pursuing so many different things, you know. And like you said, when you mentioned some mothers who are fine with that, because that's what makes them happy. And I think that's the key thing. In order to be the best that you can to your children, as long as you're doing what makes you happy, just don't, you know, push that away. So the third point I want to discuss before we get into the planner, which I'm dying to talk about, was the last one, which we probably touched on this a lot too already, but that was goal planning and it was how to accomplish your goals. So just like we t discussed too, I think another part of just accomplishing goals, sometimes we'll have goals in our mind that we haven't even bothered to pursue, or we may be at a middle stage of goals, like we may have started it, but we're not truly dedicated to it, or we're just not really sure how to just get everything together. So what's your your take on, as you mentioned, the goal planning and how to accomplish your goals, and then we can dive into the planner. Well, I think it's first about getting organized, right? Going back into that as well. It's all part of the same like matrix or process system. Um, I think that, oh, sorry, I just had a brain fart. Ask me again. <laughs> just, just the last portion about just accomplishing the goals, you know, yeah. like, Sometimes we have so many different goals on our plate and we just, it, it, the goals can be in an infancy stage where you have the idea, but you're not sure how to execute it. And like you mentioned, definitely organization is how, organization. how to start yeah. it. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing, I think. And in the process of clarity, goal setting, the, the planning is, let's be risk, realistic, right? So the reason I'm a holistic coach as well is when someone comes to me and this is a goal and we're, we're, we're ready at the planning stage, so I go, okay, you are in school, you're taking three classes, you have three children, you have a husband who's not feeling like you're, you know, giving him enough attention. When you're talking about this goal, can we look at the realistic timeline for that? When is that going to happen? How is that going to happen? What is that going to affect? And, and I'm using that example because actually someone, I did coach someone on this, that's why it's so, so real. And she's a very accomplished woman. But I'm going to, I asked her because I know that she's married. I said, okay, how's your husband feel about this? And not every female client likes that, right? Because it's, mm -hmm. it, it has this feeling of like, well, what would it matter? You know, I'm doing what I need to do. But again, if you're playing several roles, mommy, wife, um, I won't say what she does, but, you know, business owner, you know, you're working for someone else as well. You have a couple of businesses. Now you have this goal. Can we talk about a realistic timeline and how is that going to be affecting your relationships? Um, how is it going to affect your time to accomplish these other things? So the goal planning and getting organized is really looking at everything. Once you've like taken away all the stuff that doesn't belong there, we've honed down into the steps. Now we need to look at when can those steps actually occur, right? Mm -hmm. What's the first priority? When can that happen? Can that happen? Can you do that in three weeks? Can you do that in a week? Okay, if you could do that, because that needs to happen before second step happens, when can that happen? And then with my sessions, if I'm doing, I, I offer individual sessions, but also monthly, um, three months at a time sessions as well, we work through whatever comes up at each stage. So you might decide that you have a goal and the deadline is two weeks from now, and then life happens. Mm -hmm. And you come back and it's like, oh, I haven't done that. So now we need to talk about that. 
what stopped you? Was it you that stopped you? Are you using something as an excuse to, to stop you? Was that a real thing that affected you? Um, so the organizing is just putting almost like, I use Google Calendar for everything. Like I put everything, I put working out, I put my daughter's classes when I need to go to pick her up and to come back. There's something about actually seeing it in front of you, written down or however you use. Some people use apps, computer. I'm old school. I have a bunch of notebooks. I have to write everything down. And then once I'm looking at it, I tend to put things in my calendar because it forces me to, to keep that plan going. Um, I put notifications. So it reminds me constantly if I've done it or not done it. And then I allow for shuffling, right? I allow for ease and my life. I allow for the fact that I have a daughter who I might need to go back to school to drop off something that might affect something. So getting organized is, and planning to me is the only way that you can really, really get to accomplishing the goal. Now, some of us, and I've done this, I've been the, I've been told years ago that I'm a Jill of all trades right because mm -hmm. i would jump jill of all trades right because mm -hmm. i would jump into anything hey i'm like oh because i love learning new systems and processes so somebody would say jennifer i i used to work at mtv as a uh, first as a junior coordinator and first as a PA and they saw mm -hmm. me and said would you consider being a junior coordinator I had no idea some I had just gotten a job as a PA for $150 for the day and I thought that was a big deal so mm -hmm. I said yes and jumped in and figured out how to do it and then it was like well I'm going to be a production coordinator I'm going to go from junior I just jumped into things I didn't plan a lot of the things and out of experience what I tell as well to my younger clients is plan because you're going to get to a point in your life where this type of way of being has been good for me in terms of mm -hmm. there's almost like a naive uh energy that I have because I'm just like oh you know until I'm done I'm not done mm -hmm. but they, you do get a point in your life where if you haven't planned where you're going to next you kind of feel lost you know um and then it's not that you have to start over, but you have to get, for me personally, I've had to get very serious very quickly about the next, I'm, I'm, I won't say how old I am, but I'm older than you. So, <laughs> you know, you hit points in your life, pivotal points, you know, especially as women, I think we, we do that 30, 40, 50, but there's places where you go, oh, okay, I've just been having a really good time and I've gotten to do everything I wanted to do because I jumped in, but now I'm hitting another point in my life. What am I going to do? How am I going to do it? How am I going to get, how am I going to retire? Mm -hmm. How am I going to have enough money to leave to my children? How am I going to create legacy? Right. Um, I remember being interviewed by, I was in my thirties, my mid thirties and I was being interviewed. And I, at that time I was being interviewed for, coordinated position at MTV and the producer and line producers um, were in their 20s and I remember sitting there and I, I didn't look like it was in my 30s but I carried myself like I was in my 30s and I remember thinking oh shit like I didn't have a plan I'm supposed to be sitting in that position because had I planned that kind of trajectory of in the television industry you start here, but you, you, you're trying to get somewhere. I was never trying to get anywhere. And so I recognized that was my first like aha moment of like, oh man, like I really have to figure out where I'm going and what's mm. next. Because there are some industries that you do get aged out. You, know? mm -hmm. you don't get the respect of people when they start realizing like, wait a minute, you're in your forties and you're a coordinator. And these little youngins in New York working from at MTV in their 20s and they've, they've, their trajectory is on. You know, you start, it, you, you start recognizing when it's time to fold it, you know, mm. so before you're being forced. And I have a couple of the friends who've dealt with ageism in, in the media and entertainment industries. You, and they're older than me. 
So that mm -hmm. also gave me a, a like, okay, wait a minute. I don't want to experience that. I may feel young inside, but these people are looking at a resume and going like, why aren't you in a higher position? You know? Um, so yeah, I just think getting organized comes with the plan. You have mm -hmm. to be organized to get a plan going. You have to remain organized for the plan to be successful. Mm. Well, speaking of planning, let's go ahead and dive into your planner. And I want to go ahead with that title again. Damn it, don't want to. The no BS organizational planner you need. And I only said BS because I'm trying to be polite in case someone tunes in and they don't want me to say this. I mean, please, you know, so let's go ahead and dive into the planner. What made you come up with the title first off? Um, so it's damn it, I don't want to. Mm -hmm. um, but I, so I'll tell you what the impetus for the book. I just, at the time being a freelancer um, and looking back on my freelancing life, there are moments where you can't pay the bills, right? And I went through a period, um, I was an adult in my 30s, I was always freelancing. And so when you have money, you have money. When you don't, you don't. And when I didn't, I wouldn't look at my bills. I literally would just like, walk away from my bills. I would just leave them or I'd end up throwing them away. And I think, when was it? It was like, two years ago that I thought of this book. It was that that I remembered because I was doing it again, right? And my husband's like, babe, when are you gonna, you know, when are you gonna open the bills? And I'm like, oh, I do all my billing online. But, you know, like I don't need to look at the bills. And it just occurred to me, I was doing it again. And mm -hmm. so, and in my head, when he was saying that, there's a moment of like, I don't want to, like, I don't want to look at the bills. I don't want to deal with the bills. I don't want to deal with that because I, then I have to go through what money we have and I've got to do the budgeting and I just don't want to. And it, it made me see how childlike that response is, right? And so the title is really speaking almost to the child the child in us that is refusing to do some things that we have to do, right? But inside we're kind of stamping. And if you, did you, do you have the book? I need, I need to send you the book. No, I don't have it. I'm gonna, I think Jose might be sending it to you, but okay. I start off with that kind of, the introduction is basically like when we're younger, our parents tell us what to do all the time. And whether you want to do it or you don't, you do it. And then as you get an adult, it's just other forces doing the same thing. You have to pay that bill. They're going to send you the bill. And what happens if you don't pay that bill? It affects your credit. The, the impact of not doing something is harsher and more long-term. It's more impactful. You know, you don't pay a bill, uh, that affects your credit. You can't get a car. You can't buy a house. You can't get a loan if you need to for your child's college. So it's the little things that look like little things in the beginning, but the impact of us, of what we are ignoring and don't want to do as adults, it's deeper. It's the conversation you, you're trying not to have. Um, in, in the book I mentioned, you might have one a conversation where you're coming out to your family and you're trying to avoid it because you don't want to. Okay, so what does that, how does that impact you if you're not being free in yourself and honest? It's the being nervous to approach the company that still owes you money, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you, because you don't like confrontations, well, what does that do? Then you go and get pity. So didn't you work? Go get that money. Like stop avoiding the things that you don't want to do if it's going to impact you harshly or negatively in some way. So that's where it comes from. It's the child in us like, mm, I don't want to, but this plan was about, no, like, let's look at that. Like you have, there's things that you have to do. So let's get to it. Mm, wow, wow, wow. I love it. One last thing that I noticed when I was looking at your information. And one other thing I want to ask. So are you going to, is it going to be a series of planners? I was hoping for it to be a, a series of planners. What I've been doing lately is constantly revising this one. And so I wanted to... Um, expand on it in certain parts of it um, because each thing so in the book it's uh, basically a system where you write out everything day the things that you want to do the things that you have to do the things that you should do and the things that you don't want to and then through a system I won't say what the unique system is but day each day for 30 days you're going to have to look at those things that you keep saying you don't want to do 
So the goal is for you to look at it as a planner and to, for you to address the things, to do the things you don't want to do. But if you don't do it Monday, you're going to have to look at that thing again on Tuesday. You're going to have to look at it again on three Thursday. So um, it's really about, again, just forcing you to be honest with yourself, looking at the task that you are trying to avoid, and then it's making you accountable. It's forcing you to be accountable with yourself. There's no one else that can force you to pay that bill. There's no one who can force you to have the conversation. But I'd rather you look at it instead of doing what I did, which throw throw it in, throw the bills in the garbage. It doesn't mean it goes away. It just means that something is happening that you are not looking at. And one day is going to hit you when you look at your credit score or one day, you know, it will be a family member thinking they know something about you and they don't because you haven't had the real conversation. Um, it's, you know, not getting paid because you haven't pursued that conversation of go, going to get your money. It's whatever it is that you don't want to do during the day, you know, um, even towards your goals. It's a good book for, uh, for example, there's a client that I have who I used her as an example earlier in terms of graphic designing. Um, and I asked her, I said, so did you trademark copyright? Like, what are you doing with your, your designs? And Professionalism is key to me. When I stepped into this industry six years ago, I said that I would put my guests as well as my hairstylist first. Being in this industry has caused me to make great revenue and it has allowed me to live the life that I desire to live. This is Kisla Wheeler and welcome to Kisla and Koifer. Salon is a multicultural, upscale, diverse salon. It's a Paul Mitchell focused salon that caters to middle class and upper class women. So this salon is a, a beautiful environment. It explodes with optimism. That's why the color is yellow. It's very sophisticated as well as fun, full of personality. You get a full experience in here in New Orleans East. Here at Key Salon Coiffer, our main focus is to give you top-notch service, luxury service, as well as a great experience so that you can continue to return. So thank you, and I hope to see you soon. Right, like what are you doing with your, your designs? And she said, oh my God, no, I haven't. I said, so you haven't even researched it? Like copyright and trademark? It's it's a government website. You just go online. She said, no. I said, why? She said, because it just seems like a lot. And so I, when I develop this planner, it will be really going into those areas that stop us from literally doing a step that needs to happen for you to accomplish the goal. And so when she and I talked, we coached, I coached her. She just said it just felt intimidating. And I said, the goal really, really, really isn't. And mm -hmm. since then we've spoken, she's gone. Like she literally wouldn't, I said, Google it. Nobody's looking at you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just go look at it. She had it, it's such a big thing. It was freaking her out. So that is the goal of the planner. It's accountability and you being accountable with yourself. So when I develop it, it will be taking portions of it and really, really pulling at it and having a deeper kind of introspective conversation with yourself and writing it almost as a diary, like, well, well, what's that about? Let's look at that. Let's go mm -hmm. somewhere. Let's go down that road and see what's, what, what's your mental programming about this thing. Have you had experiences that are stopping you? Or is it just laziness? Because that's, that's real too. Some yeah. of you are lazy. So then look, be honest with that too. You know, like, no, nah, I'm lazy. I don't want to do it. Okay, well, good. So then you're not going to accomplish the goal. So we can sit with that too, if that's what you want. So lastly, one last thing that I did notate when I was looking through your information 
It was some of us deal head on with life's daily barrage of responsibilities and a lot of us practice avoidance. So one of the major platforms with this show is self-love. So I want to see if we can tie that together. Like just avoidance, like you mentioned, some people tack on their responsibilities and some people do avoidance. And I feel like I said self-love, which leads to confidence, which just leads to dedication, is like the fuel to everything. So what is your final, the final part of the show What's your definition of self-love and how that ties into accomplishing your goals or organizing or just pursuing your dreams? Like, how do you tie in self-love with everything? I think, I think it's really honing into you. You know, um, the fact that this planner is about accountability, self-accountability means no one else, there's no other excuses. There's no other, and I'm not saying that we don't have external reasons that actually are truly limiting us, right? That could be from financial, it could be a lot of things. Um, it could be health, but the willingness to kind of do a lot of self-evaluation, that's big for me. Self-assessing, self-evaluation. Um, it makes sense that I'm a coach because I'm constantly kind of psychoanalyzing myself as well. Um, but for me, it's important for me to be honest about all sides of myself. I'm not perfect. It is okay when I look at myself and I go, okay, Jen, you're being lazy right now. Um, and being accountable to that. I'm trying to get everyone, even as a coach, but in this planner specifically, to take responsibility and own who you are. The good stuff and the bad stuff. Like own who you are. That's self-love to me in all aspects. You know, I, I've coached people who get stuck on you know, they want to lose weight. And so they do a lot of, I call it flagellation. They constantly flogging themselves when you, I don't have time for that either. Don't mm -hmm. beat yourself up. Just look at you, be honest with yourself, decide, I'm going to have a day where I'm not doing anything. Huh. And own that and allow yourself that time. But then get back up and go, okay, I cannot just keep doing that. I have to move forward because there's something that I want, something that I'm trying to accomplish. For me, self-love is just really owning myself and being accountable to myself. And once I do that, then everybody receives a how I interact with everybody else in my life, my child, like literally everybody else in my life. I apologize to my daughter when I get it wrong. And that to me is self-love because mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be the perfect mommy. I'm not going to be perfect. I think I'm probably, I think all of our parents screw us up a little bit. So I'm probably going to screw up a little bit, hopefully not too much. But for me, self-love is accountability, accountability to myself first, because I'm my biggest motivator. I don't compete with anybody else. I'm competing only with me and what I'm trying to accomplish, but it makes me accountable and responsible to other people as well. But it has to start with me first. So that for me is a, a, the planner and even how I coach is about holding space for people and affirming them, like doing the mirror and going, look, okay, so let's look at the stuff that makes you uncomfortable, but look at this amazing stuff too. You know, let's look at the fact that in the planner, you're going to write down the things you don't want to. The fact that you even got the planner and started means you're ready to change something, mm -hmm. right? So you're looking at the I don't want to's and tomorrow you're gonna to look at them if you don't come. But my hope and my goal and intention is by the end of the week, you just feel, you know what, let me take this off the list. You know, let me do something because it's all for you anyway, right? Even the things you think is for someone else. You, if you're tied into accomplishing it or doing this task, it's for you too. You know, it's, it's I, I, I hope, I don't think it sounds selfish because I went through a period in my life where I was like, I'm selfish. But mm -hmm. then I changed the way I say it. I am self-ish, mm -hmm. right? I am. I, how, do I, how do I move in the world if I don't take care of this thing, this and my heart and my energy? Um, and so the planner is me as well, looking at myself and going, all right, Jennifer, because I use my own planner, you know? Mm -hmm. There are things that I don't want to do that I have to do. Um, I, I'll say with a quick note, you'll find once you've used the planner that the don't want to's are usually the have to's. 
the things that you have to do are, and are avoiding is usually the thing you don't want to do and vice versa. So I'm just big on moving forward. I want us to move forward um, in as many ways as possible, evolving as human beings, evolving as women, and accomplishing goals, whether it's personal or career, it's usually about bettering, right? It's usually about bettering yourself. A goal is usually about doing something that's good for you or good for others. It just, right? Like if you look at it. So right. even as something as mundane as a task that you don't want to do, if that's going to move something forward, in, including your own growth, then it's good. Mm. So, you know, that to me is... Yeah, self-love, accountability, self-accountability to yourself and taking away the power from all the external um, entities of deciding who you're supposed to be, right? We talked about that programming. We have a lot mm -hmm. of mental programming. It's culturally, it's societal, it's our parents, it's our gender, it's our race. If you hone into who you are, really, 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 the good stuff and the bad stuff, I'm using that for bad because whatever, right? Um, then you're loving on yourself. Then no, can't nobody tell you who you are or who you're supposed to be. You know already. Yes, yes. I love it. Thank you so much for this conversation. I really feel like you dropped a lot of gems and I do think people will listen and, you know, think twice about organization, pr procrastination, and just how to accomplish those goals. So before we end everything, go ahead and tell people how they can purchase your planner and how they can contact you, follow you on social media. Just, so just give everyone all your contact information. Okay. So my website is www.jennifer2ns1f, um, heslop, H-E-S-L-O-P.com. Uh, the book is called, of course I put it here, <laughs> Damn it, I don't want to. The noble, the noble ish organizational <laughs> planner you need. You can go on my website. I actually have a link um, to it there, and it leads you to the Amazon site um, where you could purchase it there. Uh, my email is connect at jenniferheslop.com or it's empathyblueprint at gmail.com. Um, I am on Instagram, Jennifer underscore S underscore Heslop. And I'm on Facebook as Jennifer S. Heslop as well. You can reach me or check me out or follow me. And uh, I also do a lot of Instagram videos. Kind of, it's usually after I've worked out at the gym. That always gives me a, 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 like a lot of ideas and messages that I want to keep to people. So if you check out my Instagram, you might see those videos. And if you'd like to sign up to get my articles, um, there's a lot of messaging in there as well, uh, tools for how to get more organized, how to get more clear. And I'm all a, I'm a whole human being, just as I said, my holistic perspective. So I might write something about being a mom. I might write something about getting organized or something about leaders in their organization and working with their teams. Might be some life advice. Um, most of all, I'm motivational. I really just... Mm -hmm. I, I just, I, I'm really into supporting people and guiding people to accomplish their highest potential. Because I think mm -hmm. we're all here to do something amazing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Those are all of the ways you can reach out. Awesome. Thank you again for being a guest. And guys, yes. please make sure go ahead and follow Jennifer and go ahead to her website and look up this amazing planner. And just like Jennifer said, we all have something amazing dwelling within us. We can all accomplish our dreams and our goals. And that dream that some of you may have that you may think, oh my God, I can't get this done. It doesn't make any sense. How am I going to get this together? I don't know where to get started. If you may not even have started some dreams that you have that can really go into something amazing. So never underestimate yourself. Don't underestimate your dreams. And importantly, don't underestimate your abilities to go ahead and accomplish those goals. Just like Jennifer said, you can organize, you can stop procrastinating, go ahead and just tackle your responsibilities. If you need some guidance or help, there are so many different resources out there. There's leadership life coaches such as Jennifer. There's so many different resources you guys can take to go ahead and accomplish your goals. Life is short. So just go ahead and just take account of that. One of the things that we talk ourselves out of 
sometimes we have this arrogance when it comes to time. We think we have so much time ahead of us to go ahead and accomplish something. I can just put it off until later. But reality is we really don't have all the time that we think we have. So the time is now to go ahead and accomplish those goals and make those dreams come true. So go ahead and check out this episode and many more at thekeychat.com. And guys, remember to go love yourself. And part of self-love is owning your abilities, knowing who you really are. You really can be everything your heart desires you to be. So go ahead and make sure you go love yourself. And thank you guys for joining the Q-Chat.